so good afternoon and welcome to the session. And uh, I'm grateful to uh, Dr. Bera, Dr. Indu, and Dr. Alu for always inviting me for their sessions. It's always a pleasure to interact with the teachers because being a teacher myself for over 20 years, uh, I understand the needs on the ground uh, so much better. Uh, so uh, let me now share my presentation. So is my screen visible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, so friends, uh, 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 I'm an educator like you. So uh, this session, uh, I because it's not face-to-face -face and uh, it cannot be as interactive, but I would like to uh, address your concerns and queries besides sharing what, uh, uh, you know, uh, guidelines that I need to uh, share. Uh, so please park your questions, write your questions in the chat box. And uh, at the end of the session, we will attend to, uh, you know, all the questions that we can. So for past uh, uh, this week, uh, uh, you have been, uh, you know, going through lots of uh, useful sessions, especially using technology in the classroom. And just now, uh, Sagar ma'am uh, uh, gave you very important, valuable tips about uh, uh, searching. So uh, you have you uh, you've also probably understood how to use the apps, download the apps, create animations, create uh, more interactive learning material. So technology in our lives, technology in education is very very useful. Uh, but today I'm going to tell you that using technology is uh, it has a lot of potential. Uh, but what are the safeguards that you need to taste, and what are the risks? I'm not going to tell you not to use technology because technology makes the learning so much easier and uh, you know everybody can, uh, <clears throat> like you all are at your own places and then you are going through this course and I'm uh, addressing you. But we have to follow safety concerns. The kind of safety concerns are not new. Uh, whatever safety con concerns you follow in your real life. So if you have, though, if you adopt, if you follow those concepts in your online life, then technology is your servant and not your master. So we we have and technology can never expect uh, you know a bond technology to master us in any way. Uh, so proceeding with my uh, session, just give me a minute. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Uh, so this is an interconnected world. Uh, we all know that technology has made the world very, very uh, approachable. Uh, we can reach across to the people in any part of the world. We can talk to them. We can uh, learn from them. And uh, we can do so much more. So uh, the, this will tell, uh, tell you, this slide will tell you that uh, how technology, as we said before, the world is in our mouth. So now the world is in our mouth. I don't know if it's in our mouth. Dunya hamare fingertips ke niche zarur hai. At the click of the mouse, we can do so many things. So we swipe and we can do so many things and reach any part of the world. So dunya hamare fingertips me hai. Aajkal wo slogan mutti se fingertips ho gaya hai. And cute fingertips me hai. Kyoki agar hum ghar bethe, we can do shopping sitting at home. So uh, uh, all of you, I mean, e-commerce is something which is, uh, uh, and buying online through uh, all these uh, uh, e-commerce e related websites. So I'm sure most of you will be doing uh, uh, marketing sitting at home. We can travel sitting at home two ways. We can book our tickets, etc. We can find out about the places. And if we cannot travel, we do virtual travel. Like if I want to see 3D image of Taj Mahal or 3D image of uh, uh, Statue of Liberty or, or even take the students through uh, some learning experience through Amazon Rainforest uh, and give them a 3D experience if I have the right equipment for it. So we can also travel uh, across the world sitting in our classrooms or at homes. Banking, I think a lot of you must be doing online banking. Uh, the India's India's UPI, uh, the latest uh, uh, news was that a lot of countries are uh, wanting India to start with their UPI system because it is one of the best and widely used UPI system in the world. And, and a lot of banking, uh, you know, a lot of us don't go to the bank and do transactions at home. 
socializing yes social media sites is one thing then calling texting you know uh, uh, podcasting and, uh, and you know we we are conveying our ideas through various forms and socializing through technology and entertainment to i mean we uh, who doesn't watch movies or listen to songs or uh, you know uh, uh, that is online we have all the uh, tv channels and uh, on the internet and then we have the ott uh, uh, netflix and uh, prime time and so many disney and all that but the most important which i have highlighted is education because that's what we are dealing with today uh, all of you are educators and you fully well know the potential of technology has changed the education landscape technology was being used in learning many years back also but since the time of covid i think uh, almost all the educators the, all the pedagogists have become digital uh, educators uh, all of you i think uh, uh, must be remembering those days when you had to um, you know uh, quickly learn how to use uh, various applications various softwares and uh, 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 most of you did and uh, people who had never used uh, technology before started doing online teaching and uh, because because you all are dedicated teachers and you don't want your uh, children to suffer so today our concentration for today is uh, uh, how to actually have safe education safe learning uh, in the technology medi mediated classrooms fine so uh, i don't think i need to dwell more on this advantages of tech supported learning uh, availability okay uh it's available to you sitting in your office sitting at home i am available to you other pre speakers are available to you uh, uh affordability uh if you had come here you would have to take uh, you know special permission then we have to house you here we have to make arrangements so it's more uh, affordable also and convenient for you to learn from where you are uh flexibility there are a lot of online courses and uh, you must have learned how to create uh, enhanced teaching learning resources for your students and let's say you are creating an a, a animated uh, uh, video or something and then you uh, tell the student to learn at their own pace in time uh, similarly there are moocs massive online courses which you can learn at your own space and uh, uh, pace and time and multitude of resources uh, earlier learning was uh, uh, you know limited to mostly chalk uh, uh, experiential learning blackboard and uh, uh, paper and, and and the books but now uh, you know we can do so many things we can create create very very innovative learning resources and those are not uh, at all difficult to uh, create using the uh, you know user friendly applications which we you which you would have learned in the past few days so technology supported learning is the need of the hour it is the present and it is the uh, absolute future so i mean some examples of uh, simple examples of using technology in education and uh, so now we are talking about technology in education i just want you to put a thinking hat uh, about it uh how many uh like uh, according to you how many hours you would be spending on internet in a day in 24 hours how many hours you would be you would be spending not right now because right now you are undergoing the course so spending many many more hours but in your otherwise life uh, so just write the option a b c d uh, in the chat box how many hours do you think uh, uh, you spend on the internet okay so there's a, a lot of you have written a b c a b some have written d also okay so a lot of people have written a and b okay uh, but i would like to tell you there has been a survey uh, where uh, uh, an adult i'm talking of adults and not the a uh, youth in the college because they spend many more more hours uh, we spend uh, uh, an adult spends about 5 to 6 hours uh, on the internet uh, you see you start your day in the morning uh, with the uh, you know uh, bowing your head in front of whom you know earlier uh, we used to bow our head definitely i'm sure you must be remembering your god but then after that you know we look at the phone we look at google baba and we bow our head in in front of google baba don't we or or whatsapp baba or whatever baba the technology baba so our phone is something we bow our head and before we sleep you know uh, what do we do 
the last time we check a phone ki uh, now before sleeping let me see if there were any messages and all that so we all are addicted uh, uh, you know i won't say addicted it's an excessive use of uh, uh, technology now there are good uses i'm sure all of you must be making making good use of uh, uh, technology and not just swipe and take away activity for you would be uh, each of you should set the screen time and uh, you should check your screen time every week uh, uh, the uh, your phone uh, will give you that uh, your screen time was so many hours and then you know it will check with your average and say you have uh, uh, exceeded or your screen time was less than screen time was more uh, you can even uh, adjust your screen time okay because what happens is that um, when we start uh, being on those sites and social media sites and all that uh, because the it's it's a continuous feed on our timeline and then we are interested as you know you you see one post and you and the other post comes and the other post comes there is no end to it and then we you know lose track of time it has happened to me many times it happens many times in a day i want to go and make a call okay so i open my phone to make a call and then i see okay there are five messages so i start checking my uh, uh, whatsapp messages or emails and then i then i then i wonder what did i pick up the phone for you know i get so side side track i think it must be happening with the uh, uh, many of you that we lose track because everything is so interesting uh, in the technology world so yes it is 5 to 6 hours but it is not not that everybody spends but on an average the survey uh, said and the the uh, college children spend 7 uh, hours uh, and plus here i would suggest uh you look up uh, the uh, you know there are suggested timelines by who world health organization on the number of hours optimal uh, time uh, the children should use the phone so uh, just check up who <coughs> website <coughs> a little later and you should know that if it is uh, you know 8 to 10 years then how how much time they should be spending on the phone it will help you as a parent also besides an educator now another question how many times do young people check their phone by young people i mean 14 years and uh, uh, you know 14 to 25 years or so especially the college students how many times so i am getting answers uh, so uh, somebody is writing a one so most of you are writing c yes it is definitely c uh, the survey also uh, you know uh, 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 included the college going students and yes they spend uh, that much of uh, time uh, they pick up the phone that much of time uh, okay now just be honest uh, uh, you know uh, like supposing you are sitting down and your phone hasn't pinged or hasn't given a beep or a signal uh, in 15 20 minutes or half an hour don't we go that oh my god i might have missed something let me see let me check my phone or if the phone is next to me on the bed or on the table automatically our hands will go to the phone to check if there are any messages it is happening to me it is happening to lots of us so we have to consciously cut down uh, on the we have to have fixed time that i am not going to spend this much more than this much of time because this excessive use can easily lead to addiction and this is how we have to guide our students because everything today i tell you will be from the perspective of your students uh, whom you are responsible for so uh, yes technology has made a huge impact in our life it has made a life easy interesting learning uh, uh, accessible and easy but technology poses risk to privacy okay our personal details to data okay uh, uh, everything about us data is things about us okay uh, whether it is a personal data or whether it is a professional data whether it is a financial data then money uh, we know how many financial scams occur the well being you know uh, one is that if somebody is bullying or blackmailing or there is a scam there is definitely uh, you know uh, stress and the other is well being gets affected with the excessive use of technology physically and emotionally then reputation reputation is something kehte hain ki uh, you can lose everything in the world but not your not your reputation because reputation once lost uh, will not uh, uh, be the same okay how does reputation because uh, the young people they post 
things without realizing and then their social media profile is full of those uh, inappropriate things hateful maybe racial maybe abusive so their reputation uh, suffers health is just physical and emotional health and relationships uh, relationships is very very important because uh, what happens is <clears throat> that uh, <clears throat> let's say uh, the, you know i have seen it myself that there are family gathering okay uh, the whole family gets together extended family for some function and now people are meeting after a long time but <clears throat> especially the young people instead of you know uh, playing together or connecting with each other you know they are busy on their phone so what happens is that we are giving more importance to our online friends uh, who may be in another part of world they don't matter to us and all that but we don't give importance to relationship and then excessive use of technology uh, uh, you know uh, impacts relationship between the parents and children between the husband and wife any kind of relationship okay uh, <clears throat> so then uh, i want to ask you a question that uh, technology gives us huge 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 benefits but uh, uh, are we ready or are we ready to prepare our children to succeed in this in this uh, new digital uh, world uh, i don't mean readiness only by the technology savvy that i should know more software i should do programming i should know to write various algorithms or various applications i'm just saying that emotionally and in otherwise have we are we preparing our students to use uh, technology uh, to be to be successful in the technology mediated age right yes or no please partially not yet ma'am not yet uh, i agree uh, uh, partially not yet uh, yes we are trying very hard and uh, uh, i agree with the partially also in fact all the answers are same because these are your personal perspectives uh, here we have to remember that our children are technology savvy and we, let's say that i get stuck or with a new software or a buy a new uh, uh, mobile uh, then i go to my children who may be 15 16 year old as young as 15 16 years and i tell them ki ye bata do ye kaise ho raha hai ye photo nahi download ho rahi ye search nahi theek ho raha you know uh, we, you know the, the, we always go to go to them yes our children are technology savvy because they are a digital natives they are, they have been born in this world and we are migrants we never had the internet in our schools and colleges or when we were growing up so we definitely go to them but you have to remember this are our children mentally by that i mean are our children able to distinguish distinguish between the right and wrong are they ready to make the right choices think critical critically analytically and behave in a controlled manner no they are not and why they are not because they are young and they need our guidance we were also like them when we were uh, as young as them so what they need is the world wide view what experience you can tell the thera you know the support of the parents in actually distinguishing right from wrong and taking the right uh, right decisions and having a uh, uh, and being and uh, uh, feel and have the feeling of well being and managing their reputation and managing their safety children are tech savvy but we as educators we as parents uh, need to help them in this direction then how we can i'll tell you as much as i can in this my other slides so what are the words that come to you when you mention internet what are the words that come to you quickly if some some of you can write risks on the internet dangers of the internet what are the words if you can just quickly write in the chat box yeah hackers yes financial cyber crime privacy phishing fraud cases so okay okay uh, in, very interesting and very relevant answers uh, you know thank you thank you so much for being so interactive uh, you know scamming etc spams okay uh, thank you so here uh, we will uh, you all have you all are smart and you have written most of the uh, uh, you know deep fakes somebody has written cyber bullying okay and uh, most of what i am going to say you have already written so you uh, uh, you know about a lot of risks today i'll be not concentrating so much on as to how to mitigate the risk so let's quickly talk about privacy we've talked about addiction we've talked about physical and mental health 
fake uh, uh, news, financial scams, reputation, digital footprints is very, very important because the children are at the cusp of their uh, uh, new lives. They will be joining colleges. Cyberbullying, trolling, we know how it uh, harms the uh, physical and mental well-being. And identity theft, which is happening a lot these days, that people take your identity, uh, you know, they may, uh, uh, you know, take your identity on a social media, on WhatsApp and send uh, messages to your people and pose as you uh, getting money or scamming them in any way. Then phishing, smishing, veiling, quishing. Quishing is not here. Quishing is another thing when some QR code is sent to you and you, uh, you know, scan the QR code and uh, share, you know, harassment, pornography, blackmailing. Okay, data breach is also very, very important, inappropriate content, especially with regard to the children. So I'm not going to dwell too much on these, on the risk. I'll just tell you very, very brief. I'm going to dwell more upon what you can do. What, what can be your role in mitigating the risk? So data breach, as I said, that uh, uh, somebody takes away your data. Data is our identity. And uh, 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 the second is system infiltration. Uh, system infiltration is, let's say, when a school is uh, having its online classes. And uh, do you remember the time when uh, we used to have, there was Zoom bombing and all that, when, uh, uh, you know, people, uh, you know, um, strangers enter the class and up upload inappropriate uh, 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 stuff or they take away the uh, data of the students. Now, data breach in is very serious, and especially in education sector. In education sector, financial sectors, data, in all, especially in these uh, sectors, data breach. Why? Because it's student data. So uh, uh, the student data is uh, uh, very, very sensitive. It is a mine of sensitive information. It can impact the safety of the student at the present times and also the future of the student. Now, why so? Because a student's uh, uh, data consists of the personal information. That's a personal identifiable information, PII as we call it. And it's all the detail about the student, the demographic details about his family and other things and uh, uh, father's income and siblings and so many other things. Then schools also collect the health data because periodic health checkups, checkups are being done and uh, academic information uh, of the student, how the student is doing and uh, testing performance data is very, very important. Behavioral details is very sensitive and photographs. Now uh, you may ask that, uh, so what, you know, if this information gets leaked? Now we all know that it is the information age. It is the digital age. By, and we call it the information age. Okay. The most important asset in this age is what? Is it gold? No. Is it money? No. It is data. It is information. If the data of a student falls into the wrong hands, so somebody may try to blackmail the family or blackmail the school, abduct the child with that data. Let's say the student of uh, the, the uh, father's income is released and father is doing very well. And in that uh, the PII data, uh, the student's uh, home address is also there. Father's phone, uh, parents' phone numbers are also there. Uh, mother details are also there. Sibling details are there. The child... And there have been cases. I am not making up any examples in this session. The child uh, could get ab abducted. Achha, ye to, uh, this, this is the moti asami, you know, and we can get a lot of money out of it. So the child may be abducted. So those are the that's the physical safety. The other is that uh, uh, since I said that data our data is sold in the market, you know, uh, 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 it that uh, this data can be sold to the inappropriate people. And uh, who can start calling up the child, approach the child, blackmail the family, blackmail the child. And the other is that uh, in, they also sell this data to the marketing uh, organizations. So all of a sudden, uh, if they say a student who's, uh, uh, you know, uh, physically uh, uh, challenged or the student is behavioral issues in the classroom or academic <clears throat> testing performance data, they, it's leak, the student is not doing well. So those marketing, those organizations, uh, they start approaching and bombarding with all kinds of advertisements. And let's say, uh, you know, the student is not doing well now, there are behavioral issues, and uh, these get recorded somewhere, and later the child grows up, 
and become successful or seeking admission in the college, then these details, if they are released, uh, then the student's reputation and future prospects may be harmed. And photographs uh, are uh, uh, very, very sensitive. We all know uh, that uh, through the use of AI, photographs and even otherwise photographs can be mocked. Photoshop, use of AI, photographs can be uh, mocked. And these photographs can be, uh, you know, used to create anything. I mean, uh, you know, the face can be same and the body can be inappropriately dressed or doing inappropriate actions or talking inappropriate things. So the that's why the photograph of the students, you know, in, 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 in one case, one school uh, approached and said that uh, one of their, uh, uh, it was a tiny talk uh, school. Uh, so one of their uh, child's picture is actually on a, uh, you know, uh, cereal box. And the parents never uh, gave consent for it. So, you know, they may be used for anything. And uh, uh, so uh, the privacy and personal safety is very, very important. And the bullying and trolling can happen. Blackmailing, ransomware can happen. Grooming, sex sexting, what is grooming? Grooming is preparing the child uh, to do, you know, uh, inappropriate things by, you know, talking to the child, by gaining the uh, confidence of the child and then slowly asking the child to perform certain actions or, you know, send some uh, nude photos or something. And sexting is, you know, wrong uh, uh, messages, inappropriate messages. Uh, soliciting and grooming are somewhat similar and defaming is uh, when somebody has somebody's personal details or these kind of sensitive pictures and then the blackmailing ransomware or mean things or trolling or doxing can happen. So all of this impacts the, uh, the future of the children. It, it impacts the mental well-being. Okay, now let's say, God forbid, if uh, one child has uh, uh, these, uh, you know, is subjected to these. So the whole family, the parents, all of us, the, whether it is the parents or the educators, all of us are working towards the well-being of the child. All of us are working to prepare a child to succeed in future, whether it is teaching any uh, subject whether it is, uh, uh, you know, preparing them for uh, games or whether it is any moral science lesson, we, all of us are uh, responsible for preparing the children for good future. But what if because of certain carelessness, uh, the good, uh, the present is uh, uh, impacted. So then all of us are uh, held responsible for that. So reputation, uh, mental well-being, physical health concerns, inappropriate uh, cons uh, 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 content and uh, access by strangers. Okay, so this is uh, uh, done. So now I have told you enough about the risks. Now, what are our responsibilities as educators and also as uh, uh, parents? Okay, as a parent also, uh, you know, you need to take care. I mean, obviously you, you would want the best of your, uh, for, your, for your children. So what are the strategies? Okay, now these are related only to the education, to the online uh, uh, teaching, learning and using technology in education. So because uh, our topic is related only to that. So number one, uh, as uh, uh, educators or as school managers or as the principal of the school, isn't it our duty to provide, provide safe learning environment to the children, whether it is online or whether it is physical? In physical world, the school, our schools have, uh, you know, very tall and strong walls. Our school have gates. There is a security person uh, at the gate. The security person does not let anybody enter. Somebody wants to go to the school. There will be a call that uh, a so-and-so person has come and he's so-and-so's parent or he wants to, you know, meet the principal for some other thing and all that. Then his, uh, the person who's coming, his and her credentials are approved or only when the security approves the credentials or the head of the school or the teacher approves the credential, yes, he, he or she is a parent. Yes, he or she can come to the school because it has come to deliver something or repair something. Only then they are allowed. So here, and even uh, in the classroom, 
you know we make sure we have those windows we have those bars why we have those because you know and and the balcony walls uh, uh, the uh, are pretty high so that the students don't fall down so that they don't get hurt you know those things are also there similarly in the online world also it is the duty of us as educators as the school managers to make sure that the students are safe and how can we do that uh, basically like the school have uh, uh, boundary walls so uh, we could have firewall around the school so why do you think that the banks are safe the government organization data is safe because they have a protective thing called as uh, a, a program called as firewall and that firewall cannot be penetrated it is pretty pretty secure so that fire if if there is uh, you know here a uh, 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 physical world is student and online world it is the data of the student that is as important okay so like there are uh, there is a gate and and there is a guard and authentication happens similarly don't you have to uh, enter the password username and the password uh, to enter various sites so similarly for all our online uh, uh, usage with the children uh, we should actually uh, have uh, uh, very strong uh, uh, passwords and we have to also guide the students and the parents not to share passwords with anyone so password is a security guard which allows them inside the school in the school we keep the files of the students locked inside the office inside the cabinet don't we do you know the in the staff room the teacher has lockers why why in the office we have the records of the students uh, uh, not scattered around and in uh, in those cabinets because their pii personal identifiable data is very very important so this i'm saying i'm not telling you anything new what i'm saying is the method is new the concept is the same secure students physically mentally secure their data in every kind of uh, uh, way so same thing you apply in your online uh, uh, usage so uh, the learning platforms and applications should be secure now we uh, because there are a lot of applications you know we learning apps are there so we tell the student okay somebody tells me it geography so somebody says that uh, uh, geogebra some other app is very very good and i get very excited i see that app i get very excited i tell my students let's uh, uh, you know uh, uh, read this particular lesson or do this exercise as on geogebra app so they have to log in but that app may not be safe okay so what we need to do when we are suggesting an application to the student okay we are letting the student get into that online world of digital world of application so it is like taking the students on excursion when we take the students for excursion we make sure they are safe here they are individually going for online excursions okay and then we have to that don't we if we have to take students to a park for a picnic or to a museum we follow so all the steps that you have to follow here for the apps you have to see the rating of the app the review of the app the number of users of the app and not any app that you know because that app will take a, for, you have to because the student will have to register on that app okay and when the student registers or you register the students then the details of the students are given there aren't they given there and don't they ask us the details so these things are very important and talking of the applications uh, even for you and me when we are signing for the applications we get so excited this is a wonderful learning app or this is a very good app for uh, uh, you know uh, 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 any any uh, anything that you want everybody wants you to get app you know whether you want to drink water you have app the banks want you to get app banks app and other apps are compare safer because they have fire firewalls but don't try to download apps xyz from anywhere okay because these apps take away your pii personal identifier data that that uh, i'll go back to the slide in the end so that you can actually take a photograph and keep it in your uh, uh, on your mobile to see that which all data they can take and that data is so important so when you are you are, uh, you know uh, uh, actually uh, filling up details on the app so this is very very important listen carefully friends 
there are some fields which have asterisks and there are some fields which are non asterisk remember that the fields which have asterisk are mandatory the other fields which don't have asterisk are not mandatory okay so you don't have to fill that data so uh, apps are not forcing you to give the data you are giving the data for example on facebook and instagram people give their uh, uh, you know phone numbers their sibling details their uh, uh, you know spouses details those details they take because what i said data is power data is uh, uh, money data is gold okay so all uh, platforms are looking for your data huh? but even if you don't give which is not marked asterisk it is not that you will not be able to access that app in our excitement or in unawareness uh, thing we don't uh, uh, bother so learning platforms and app security is very very important secure login credentials username and password password should not be shared password should be difficult and not easy to remember you know uh, there there was a survey there by uh, about you know uh, some white hat hackers well like good hackers uh, they uh, they were asked to uh, you know crack the passwords of some random people they took out of let's say uh, uh, 10 people they took just 4 to 5 minutes to break the password of uh, 6 people out of 10 it just takes that much of time it's a combination because uh, you will have your date of birth you will have your uh, home address you will have your dog's name you will have to, so and then all that data is available from your from on various websites you get it and uska ek profile they make a profile out it's not uh, uh, very uh, difficult to uh, crack a password okay so the other is secure cloud and data sharing platforms are important because let's say that uh, uh, i am a class 8 uh, um, uh, class teacher now all the other teacher have to give me the mark sheets of their subjects so that i can compile results now does a teacher tell the pn to go and give the mark sheet or a senior student or anybody else a subject teacher will give the mark sheet the paper to the teacher you know personally or in a very safe manner okay otherwise it can be intercepted in between it can be seen it can be changed similarly when we are sharing data about students or their uh, academic details or anything so we normally we uh, just uh, uh, don't bother and we just send them on any platform so those platforms also have to be secure and then most of the platforms which give you free service why do they give give free service because they getting your most important asset which is your think which is your which is your data i keep on coming back to it. so when you share let's say as a math teacher uh, sending the uh, the mark sheet to a uh, class 8 uh, class teacher my file should be password protected okay even if you are sharing it. so and the password can be told separately to the teacher on not the same platform maybe uh, uh, just on the phone or through through whatsapp okay so even if somebody intercepts a file in between they cannot open because it is password protected okay along with the password uh, uh, when you have to uh, uh, access a site or when students have to access any learning material there should always be two factor authentication now this two factor authentication is very similar to your household concepts of you locking the house so these days because there are too many threats in a real world also in a, i mean too many threats in a real world. so we have that wooden door we lock it uh, self lock ho jata hai and then we put a uh, you know some uh, big lock also and then most of us living in apartments or we also have the grill door don't we so we have a double protection layer okay and we have uh, our windows are there which have glasses at home but then we also put a grill so that's double protection similarly two factor authentication on for the online sites or for your site will give everybody uh, will give the hacker another uh, layer of protection which he or she cannot uh, uh, break so one example of uh, two factor authentication is one is the password the other is otp that you get
So OTP makes it uh, 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 in in a lot of other sites which where it's more sensitive information is there. They also have the face print, face recognition. They also have the uh, uh, fingerprinting uh, and all that. So uh, two factor authentication for all your all your platforms is a must. Otherwise, you know uh, you will lose your most important asset. Just apply the logic to your house where you uh, keep things very, very carefully and uh, uh, protected, okay? And the same concept you apply, uh, apply to your online practices and data. Then limited access and control user managed privileges. Okay, it may sound big. It is as simple as that that uh, um, uh, an office has the record of the student, but I, even as a class teacher, or even as a school coordinator, I cannot go and uh, I don't have the key to that uh, office and open the uh, files of the students. I have to go through proper channels to get personal details. Don't we have to do it uh, uh, in our schools? Okay. As a math teacher, I will not have access to the uh, uh, the performance or the mark sheet uh, uh, marks of the students of other uh, uh, subjects. So we are limiting access and we are giving user privileges. As a teacher, you have the uh, mark sheet for all the uh, subjects. As a math teacher, I don't have of all the subjects. And office people do not have access to the mark sheets or academic performance. They have access to only the student uh, personal data and other uh, fee data and other things. And the other, another one is end-to-end -end encryption. Uh, we try to, uh, uh, you know, use those platforms where the data is encrypted. For example, like WhatsApp is pretty safe. It's end-to-end -end encrypted. If I send a message on WhatsApp, even a simple message of good morning, for example, so that is converted to ones and zeros. And then at the other end, receiver's end, it is decrypt decrypted. Okay, so that anybody who intercepts it in the in the in between will see only garbled stuff. The hackers do that, and you know uh, they see only garbled stuff. So end-to-end -end encrypted platforms and uh, software should be used. Then uh, uh, something more. Sorry, just let me go. I I am always running short of time because I have to tell you privacy settings, registering for apps, gaming sites are very uh, uh, dangerous. So uh, we have to tell the students to be on those, uh, the, the, not to be on those dangerous sites. Passwords I have talked and photos I have talked. Okay, so uh, uh, the other is that uh, uh, do not share personal details, protect the personal details of the students. Uh, you might have to, the school might want to post the photos of the student for their uh, publicity also. on the. So we blur the name. Uh, uh, and faces. We don't write the names and blur the faces so that the face, uh, uh, you know, screenshot cannot be taken and uh, photograph uh, 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 misused. Then third party apps, don't try uh, apps. You have to be very careful with apps. Malicious links, everybody tells you whether it is WhatsApp or whether it is on your email. The latest uh, malicious link is, uh, uh, you know, is masked in Office 365. So the latest window users, this is the news of just last week. Uh, the latest window users are getting alert by Microsoft uh, Office 365. So if you like Office 365, most of us use, who all use Windows machine. So automatically open. But if you look at the URL, if you look at the logo, it is a fake message. It is not from uh, Office 365. So how you will say how to differentiate Differentiate by being cautious, differentiate by being alert. If you get this kind of alerts or somebody tells you vacation scams or we have so many of scams like this. Or, you know, if you think in 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 a lot of corporates, what they are saying uh, uh, or even in schools, what happens? Uh, you get a link from uh, uh, the school authority uh, saying that uh, uh, please update your details for evaluation or whatever it is. So you update all your details, but then you have to see that email is from the school or not, you have to check and recheck because it may be a spam. It may be just a way of collecting your personal data and the school may not even be aware of it. So you have to be very, very alert. Antivirus has to be updated and use original softwares and uh, uh, you have to be very, and the website, school websites has been, you know, they have been sad instances 
where uh, some hackers have uh, got access to the school website and in you know where you post all your details where the uh, you know uh, reputation of the school is uh, uh, seen by others you know and uh, uh, there they have defaced the website website posted wrong comments posted uh, uh, inappropriate things in one of the uh, examples from us uh, some senior students got access to the web website and then they posted on the website that holiday for next 3 days because of this reason you know because you know the, the children are like i said they are very very tech smart again now the children posting Okay, it's, it's uh, uh, you know, you feel, okay, how smart are they? But are they, were those children of uh, class 12 uh, able to make the right judgment? Able to think critically the result of that action? They were not. Here we come in. Here we have to guide and you we have to mentor and monitor them. So uh, ensuring parental control is very important. Uh, the school should limit access to website. Like I said, access privileges. If seniors have access to certain websites, a class five student using the same lab cannot have access to that, those websites. And after, and hygiene has to be maintained in the lab, not only by cleaning and other physical hygiene. Uh, when the senior students, you know, some naughty ones may just put some kind of uh, document which has inappropriate content or they, they may have downloaded inappropriate content and the junior you know, the little ones come in and then they see that. So it is a duty of the computer teacher, uh, you know, after every class, you know, to, uh, or if not after every class, at least once in a day, as the day ends, uh, the she should get the last period free so that she can do the hygiene things uh, in the lab. And content filters can be used in the, in, in the, in the school lab that certain offensive words, any, any photo, any song, any document, Anything that has certain offensive words which are inappropriate of children of the school uh, should could not cannot be downloaded because in some schools we in, in for the seniors we have to give access to internet okay because we encourage a lot of research and uh, uh, you know so in those cases then I have already talked about the hide uh, hide faces and norms and digital hygiene uh, the other is mentoring and monitoring discuss about online risks and threats with your uh, school students with your own children. Uh, this is parental control. Parental control is not only we kind of put a software like Net Nanny software or uh, uh, and then which uh, which uh, by which they cannot download inappropriate things. It's also about one on one discussion. Don't we have the model science or uh, uh, that uh, uh, other uh, you know classes where we talk to them about values? I do sessions on. I have done with the uh, CIET uh, Dr. Indu herself a session on the values, ethics, and etiquettes to be followed uh, in the online space. We teach a student a lot about right and wrong, stranger danger, about the values they have to follow, you know, but when it comes to online world, we think that they are very, very mature. They are very, very tech savvy. And uh, what can we teach them? Like I said, we have to teach them on how to use this how to be successful in this uh, uh, amazing, powerful world, full of potential, but also full of uh, uh, risks. Time management, set limits at home as parents, content filtering have talked, and then there are, uh, uh, you can monitor the, uh, you know, where the child is, but in, let's say the, the child has phone. So you can monitor, monitor what alerts the child is getting and through the GPS tracking where the child has gone. So I'm not saying this is not surveillance on the child, the child should know that the, the phone, if he or she is getting the phone, he or she is getting the phone because these kind of alerts, I mean, uh, you will be putting these kind of monitoring uh, uh, applications on their phone because these are important. Okay, so have discussions with them before giving the phone. So data security, financial security, personal security in the online and offline world is very important. Just a couple of slides more. I won't take more time. So uh, just read it quickly, safety and security for yourself and for the people who are whom you're responsible for. Keep your geographical location of, we needed to book the cabs, we needed to check the weather uh, all the time, you know, but uh, we can set it on if I need to book the cab. Control app permissions, like I said, uh, put your data in the field, which have asterisk, this means they are mandatory and use strong passwords, set two-factor authentication, Avoid public Wi-Fi, 
please, because uh, that's, uh, uh, you know, you're putting yourself in the uh, world for, to, for the hackers to take advantage of you. Avoid juice jacking. That is, we go to the railway station or the airport or someplace, and then our phone is running out of battery and we plug it there. Uh, not realizing that definitely the phone is getting the power and but the, but the data may also be collected on the other end because you know the Bluetooth, you know, Bluetooth you can receive and send the data. Okay. Don't participate in online challenges that do you, I look like Hima Balini or I look like Alia Bhatt or I look like Hithik Roshan or how will I look like uh, uh, 10 years from now? And then I keep on sharing the pictures and my personal details. You know, use the, the, there are a lot of those surveys online where they say, fill up this form, we will tell your personality type. Okay, and all that. So have you ever seen none of these applications which will uh, will say that, no, you don't uh, uh, look like any actress. You are plain and simple. How many of us look like act actresses in the real world? Tell me, I don't look like any actress. Okay, and if somebody says, uh, you know, because they want people, they want, you know, we thrive on, you know, good praise, the dopamine effect that they call it. And... Please, especially ladies, don't part participate in online challenges like uh, the Sari Challenge. Friend sends you this. I'm sending this to so and so Sari Challenge. Post your picture online, ma'am. That picture may be morphed and used and misused. In it may be bad for you. It may embarrass your kids also in the future because your face may be there, your body may be dressed not in a sari but in anything which you can never even dream of. Recheck your privacy settings on WhatsApp. Very very important. Go back. Uh, all these applications have got very strong privacy checks. But we are the weak link is human being. The weak link is our carelessness. We think we don't have time. So your uh, each one of you, please go back and uh, uh, check your privacy settings on Google. They should be private. They should not be public. On WhatsApp, check your privacy settings. Very, very important because recently there have been lots of WhatsApp hacking uh, happening. Okay. On your social media accounts, everywhere. All these platforms have uh, those options for stringent privacy, but we are the ones who uh, don't apply. Either we are careless or we are unaware. Lost and found USB. This I put because recently a case happened that somebody found a USB and then USB is something, pen drive is something which you always need because either it gets lost or you somebody borrows it, doesn't give or whatever it is. First of all, don't give your uh, uh, USB that is the pen drive to anybody because that may contain a whole lot of data. Then let's say uh, when we go for printing, let's say I need some of my personal documents to be printed, but that USB that pen drive also has lot many folders which has my other personal data. So we don't, so that printer may just quickly take uh, take your data and put it in his system. You never know the kind of people you are. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it was in Haryana sometime back. So some USBs were scattered. Okay, uh, uh, so people found USBs. So those USBs were planted by the hackers, the moment you put it in your uh, slot, it in your in in in, in the computer slot of uh, this thing, uh, the malicious virus got transferred and their devices got hacked. So never, never, never I always think there is nothing ever ever free. It always comes with a price. Okay, uh, the the last slide that uh, school should have firewalls. I know it costs a little money, but then uh, for the safety, when we do so many things in the physical world, let's do this also. Inclusion of digital citizens, talking of digital citizenship, values, ethics in the digital world is very important in our classes. Uh, capacity building of teachers and office staff on how to keep the data secure. Computer teacher to run hygiene tests on all the machines. School counselors have to be uh, uh, to understand to how to report, and uh, the, they have to be given the helpline numbers. Okay, cybercrime.gov.in is a national portal, and uh, uh, and the school counselor also has to be made aware of the various risks so that he or she can actually help the children. And uh, because when they probably went for their learning as a counselor. Uh, the online risks and online things were not included. Involve parents. That is very, very uh, important. So um, in the end, I will say uh, that, uh, uh, see the technology, as I said, has a lot, a lot of potential. Okay, 
and let's use the potential of internet to prepare our students for the future workforce uh, uh, and in a very uh, safe, safe, safe manner. And how? By following the rules of information superhighway. When we drive on the road, when we go on the highway, don't we follow the rules? Aren't we alert? Aren't we careful? Okay, before overtaking a car, I'm careful. At the signals, I stop. At zebra crossing, I pause. In the online world, we have to follow absolutely the same concepts. So uh, that's all for my presentation today, friends. And uh, uh, lots of things to share. Uh, I could you know, go on for hours, but uh, uh, you have your valedictory session also now. And uh, uh, so I'll now stop sharing. I'll go on to the chat and then we can have the uh, question answer session. Okay. Um, okay. L lots of lots of uh, uh, chat is getting filled very fast. Uh, I will let me open it. Okay. Yes. Uh, thank you for finding the session. A lot of you have said that the session was very informative. Uh, uh, Thank you. Somebody has asked, is it safe to save information on the Google Drive? Yes, comparatively safe. There is nothing which is 100% safe in the real world and in the online world. So yes, Google Drive is safe, provided your, uh, uh, you have made the settings as uh, private and your password is, uh, uh, you know, cannot be hacked by anyone. And then it is safe. Uh, so, uh, like, need of the R session, and you can, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, Dr. Alo, doc, uh, uh, if you can kind of uh, let the students ask the question, will be good. So cloud, uh, somebody has asked a question, cloud, that's why I said that uh, the data sharing and data storing platforms have to be actually secure. If it is a cloud by a renowned uh, company, technology company, it is safe. It will have good firewall. And if it's a cloud you've never heard of, which is giving you free services, it may not be safe. Okay. Uh, Telegram app is also comparatively safe. And uh, uh, how is information uh, uh, ethical hacking uh, means, ma'am? So I'll quickly tell uh, that uh, there are uh, uh, two kinds of, uh, uh, three kinds of hackers, uh, uh, white hat hackers, gray hackers, and uh, uh, black hat hackers. Black hat hackers are those people who hack a computer, the, who take the details of the students, who are basically uh, digital uh, thieves, and they do it for all the wrong purposes. The white hat hackers are those like, let's say that uh, some website, the, you know, the organization feels that this website needs to be strengthened, like banks, etc. So they hire these white hat hackers who are experts and who go through the website and tell them that these are the loopholes. And there you could, uh, you know, make your data secure and these can be hacked. So those are white hat hackers. And can a teacher post uh, photos of the students on social media? Like I said, not at all safe, sir. Uh, photos are, I mean, they can be mocked, the students can be uh, uh, blackmailed or uh, uh, anything. So please don't uh, post photos because uh, if you want to talk about the activity of the school, side posts or back or the long distance, uh, uh, you know, uh, short, or maybe make the uh, places uh, uh, faces blur. And uh, when they use free apps to steal data from a laptop or drive also, they steal data from the, your device. Excuse me, ma'am. Hmm. Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, due to shortage of time, we can address the other questions in the WhatsApp group. We all will be there in the WhatsApp group. Then you have to make me also part of WhatsApp group. Or yes, you have to send over the questions to me. Yes, ma'am, definitely. Okay, so I'll end the session now. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you, everybody. And... Uh, uh, I hope the session was uh, uh, useful for you. Uh, you are a very uh, interactive group and I enjoyed, uh, uh, you know, talking to you through digital medium.
Thank you so much, everybody.